Oh my god, god. what makes a legend? What makes a legend? Okay. I think what makes a legend is um, someone that's influenced like a great number of people and influenced like genres. And also, like, it, there has to be like a general consensus among people that they are like this sort of like god kind of figure. I think, I think that's what like, people like Dave Grohl uh, like it, ele elevated to that status. Ooh. What makes a legend? Um, integrity, honesty, uh, that ability to say to everything, being self-belief, staying true to what you're what you're about, and. Uh, Never having to turn back around and say, I only did that for the money. I did that really for for me. I, th I guess one of the easiest ways for someone to become a legend is to die pretty early on. Like, quite frankly. I think what makes a legend is someone that's good at their craft, someone that's really honed in on their craft, uh, someone who influences people, somebody who's just good at what they do. Someone who's been there, probably been there from the start of the scene, someone who's helped found the scene, someone who's like made such a great impact on the music that they make that everyone knows their name. Anyone who listens to that scene, listens to that music, even in 20 years down the line, even when that person's not making music anymore, they know the name of that guy. A legend is someone that's like big, like larger than life, is well known to everyone. I think what makes a legend is somebody that's a bit special to the mundaneness of you know everything else that's out there. Someone who really gets people talking and who's remembered for like years to come. You know, people kind of like David Bowie or Debbie Harry or even like you know Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac are people that really make a big impact on others and on the music scene itself. I'd say my favourite legend is probably Matt Bellamy from Muse. Uh, basically he's the guy that got me interested in music. He's the guy that made me pick up guitar. He's the guy that made me want to write about music. He, he's my legend. I'd have to say Prince. My boy Prince. I love Prince. Because um, like, I've spoken about this to a few people. I don't really have any friends who are like huge Prince fans, so like when I, when I talk to people about Prince, it's very much me talking at them. One of my favourite legends, I, I mean, I, I don't really look back to those kind of things and elevate these people to those statuses, but I guess Robert Johnson, because uh, he influenced like ev everything. He's like kind of like a granddaddy of music, I guess. And he's a legend in the sense that there's a legend, like there's a story that goes along with him, the whole like he sold his soul to the devil. So, you know, yeah, he's, he's my legend. Yeah. I think like there's no one like him in music history who he writes his own music, he, he can play guitar, he can play bass, he can play drums, he can play keyboard, like all to virtuoso ability. David Bowie. I have to say David Bowie. It's something special, you know, like, he's been around for years now, he's iconic, he's got that look, you know, the Ziggy Stardust thing or the Aladdin Zane with the, the, you know, the lightning stripe on his face. His music Everyone, everyone knows who he is. Everyone talks about him. His music is something else. He did something completely different to other people, other people doing at the time. So you know, I think David Bowie is a legend that will live on in, with years to come. Really, it was uh, at the tender age of ten, seeing him on on top of the pops was a massive moment in my life. But actually, more importantly, seeing him do Driving Saturday on on uh, the Russell Hart and show. Uh, and it was like, uh, pop stars aren't like this, this is incredible. Obviously the, I think it was 1972 Top of the Pops, uh, what he did when he first came out looking quite camp. Obviously that seems like norm now, everybody's doing it, uh, but it was frowned upon back then. Yesterday in fact I spoke to Fabio who's just a legend of the drum and bass scene. Um, he, you know, and the nice thing about him was literally he's such a down to earth guy still, you know, he is considered by so many people to be this like amazing guy who has helped like found drum and bass as it is today and he's just a normal guy. Um, he is in charge of what he wears, he directs his own videos, he choreographs his gigs, he's like in charge of everything. He produces all his own stuff as well. Like, I, I don't think there's ever been anyone like him before. I think it would be Dave Mustaine of uh, Megadeth. I'm not like as big a Megadeth fan as I was when I was 15, but 
I just I don't know. He's just he's he just really like summed up to me what a legend is. Like he took loads and loads of drugs and shit in the eighties, and he's a probably one of the, still one of the best guitarists ever. Like he's an amazing songwriter. Uh, a lot of people still care about Prince. He's still popping up as features and stuff. I could go on all day. Oh yeah, I don't think I've seen any legends live. I saw Tenacious D once, and I, I think Jack Black's a legend, but don't think many people would agree with me. But you know, it's. I, I guess like, you see someone that's of that high status and it's like kind of mind-blowing. So, as opposed to a normal gig, you just be like, that was cool. Um, it's definitely seeing a legend live is... It's gonna sound really probably cliche, but it is life-changing. I remember the first time I seen Matt Bellamy live, it definitely... It was probably ranked as just one of the best experiences of my life. Johnny Rotten, the Sex Pistols, The Clash, Legends. When I first saw the Sex Pistols, the well, second gig I ever went to, the first gig was Pink Floyd, I was bored out of my mind. The second gig was Sex Pistols, I was 14 and they were mine. I recognised that and I loved everything they were about. Tear up the rule book, be honest, be, be truthful, don't be sheep. And that's to me is a legendary approach to everything. I've seen Blondie a few years ago, which was a bit weird considering you know they've aged quite a bit now. And I've seen a few fighters, um, even people that I consider like you know the killers, they're pretty legendary, you know, from the noughties. And um, I saw a bit of Bon Jovi's set as well at Isle of Wight. The Cure is like the first one that came to mind when I saw them at Reading a couple of years ago and I was deep in my Cure phase at that point so that was wonderful. It's a super long set um, but I guess for an artist with that big a back catalogue it kind of makes sense but it was like three hours which is almost a bit much for me. The one that never lets me down is Iggy Pop, always an amazing performer and I've also been lucky enough to interview almost all of my, my heroes and all of those legends and again Iggy Pop is the man who is, he is an amazing interviewee because he is so damn intelligent and, and again and that's somebody else who's always followed his own lines, own rule book. He doesn't count he doesn't bow down to, to what the marketing man tells him he's going to do this week. I think what makes these acts of, you know, special to see live is is the fact that they are something else, you know? They're, they're just, they're another level of great. Like, for example, seeing Bon Jovi playing Living on a Prayer, not one person in the crowd is not going to be singing along to that, you know? It just makes the atmosphere something a bit spectacular. Dave Grohl, I've seen when I saw Food Fighters. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I've, seen, I've seen quite a few people, I don't know. I've done my head. Metallica were an odd one, because I didn't think I'd like them, but they're actually really, really good. Uh, I don't know, people like Prodigy, um, Rolling Stones, that's probably actually the best. The Rolling Stones, I guess, for 2013 was probably the best uh, legend band I've seen. I guess I saw Morbid Angel play at Bloodstock in um, 2011. For me, that was like a legend. Well, that that was a band that were like legends to me because they were the first big like death metal band, the first band to really do death metal as in its current form. And yeah, I think like that was that was awesome. There was a real like atmosphere to it, and like uh, started raining when they got on stage, which was cool. People thinking of them as someone who is totally separate from the you know then beyond human but what really makes it is when they're not when they're normal like you feel like you're being part of like some kind of history i guess with with legendary acts uh if it's some big reunion or big comeback you you feel more a part of it although it can be exciting obviously if it's an up and coming band uh like announcing themselves as a headliner or something but like it obviously it plays into the nostalgia factor as well if if you grew up listening to them or whatever but yeah you just feel more more part of it I believe.